Markets are back with a vengeance as 11 major U.S. banks poured $30 billion in deposits to save First Republic Bank. That's including Bank of America, Citigroup, J.P. Morgan, Chase and Wells Fargo. European stocks closed higher yesterday with banking stops up per 1.24 percent. Credit Suisse and Battle stocks also finished the sessions up 19 percent. And that's after the Swiss National Bank said it would provide a liquidity backstop to the bank. Asian stocks were also rising across the board this morning as Wall Street moved to shore up the banking system in a sign of confidence on the sector. For more on this now, let's go to Danny Hewson, who is AJ Bell, financial analyst in Huddersfield, UK. Danny, thank you very much for joining us this morning. So 11 banks shoring up First Republic Bank. I mean, I wonder, is this a sign of confidence restored or there's more to come in the next few days? I think it's a sign that they want confidence to be restored. Obviously, panic is the biggest enemy here. They don't want to run on any more banks, particularly those smaller regional banks like First Republic, which have been vulnerable because they haven't come under the same kind of scrutiny of regulators that some of the bigger banks. So I think the fact that these huge US banks have stepped in and put their own money in to bolster those reserves is a good thing. It will help with confidence, but I think a lot of investors and a lot of depositors do still have questions about the safety and security of financial infrastructure. Interesting. Danny, and moving to Europe, uh, Credit Suisse has been in the eye of the storm, obviously, these days. But when it comes to vulnerability of banks to higher interest rates, how different is the Credit Suisse case um, from the SVB case? There are some similarities, but you've got to remember that the situation with Credit Suisse has been going on for a number of years. It's in a major restructuring game at the moment after lots of allegations of wrongdoing, and it's really trying to put things right. So it was vulnerable to any sort of worry about the financial uh, banking sector. That said, I think investors are really growing weary with Credit Suisse. You know, they don't feel that it is going to be able to turn itself around and make itself profitable. And I think what we've seen over the last couple of days has been a demonstration of that. We did see yesterday, though, of course, the European Central Bank hiking interest rates, that full half a percentage point, effectively saying, look, it's business as usual. We don't see a risk of contagion to other parts of the European banking sector. And we're quite content with that our main focus has to remain on getting inflation down. Right, so Donny, do you expect further panic and contagion fears next week, not to mention if the Fed were to really raise interest rates? I, I think a lot of people are deeply concerned about how these interest rate hikes are impacting not just the banking sector, but businesses right around the globe. You know, the era of cheap money has come to an end and cracks are beginning to show as companies get used to the fact that money is more expensive. I think there are a lot of questions now about the Fed's next step. Will it choose to take a pause or will it go ahead in a similar way that the ECB said? Basically, we don't see an issue because in itself, if it doesn't follow through on hikes, Perhaps it's suggesting it isn't as confident in the financial sector as it is suggesting it is at the moment. Mm. Donna Hewson, thank you very much for this very comprehensive analysis. And now let's go to other top stories from around the world. Turkey attracted $13 billion in foreign direct investments in 2022. The country aims to receive 1.5% in global investments in the coming period. Turkey was one of the first few countries to recover economically from the coronavirus pandemic, as well as from Russia's war in Ukraine. FDI in the nation has been on an upward trend since November last year. Germany's Volkswagen Automotive is offering $537 million in cash subsidies for car purchases in China. The move comes along with 40 other brands who are aiming to cut prices ahead of a change in emissions rules in the auto market. Chinese passenger vehicle sales fell 20% this year, despite reduction in prices to stimulate demand. And the U.S. Department of Justice is reportedly investigating TikTok's parent company for surveilling American journalists. According to Forbes, prosecutors have requested information from ByteDance on how staff use the video app to monitor users' physical location. The Chinese company has fired four employees who it said improperly accessed the information on U.S. journalists. And that is all from Mrs. for now.